Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this video, we will look at the PMT function in Microsoft Excel. PMT stands for payment. We will see what the PMT function is. We will go through the syntax in the PMT argument. We will also see how to use the PMT function in Excel to calculate the interest payments for a car loan and for a house loan. So the PMT function helps you to calculate what almost everybody is always interested in. Most times people are interested to know the interest amount on a loan before they collect the loan. Now the PMT function is what helps you get this information. It is a financial function that calculates the payment for a loan based on three major parameters. One is the constant interest rate. Another one is the number of periods that you want to pay the loan. And the next is the loan amount. You need these three parameters to be able to use the PMT function to know how much you would pay as interest for the loan until you finish paying for the loan. The PMT function is available for Office 365, Excel versions 2019, 2016, 2013, 2010, and 2007. As always, the link to the practice file is in the description box. The only way you can know how to use Excel is when you practice. So the practice file is in the description box. Do well to download the practice file so that you can practice as you watch this video. If this is the first time of visiting my YouTube channel, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Please give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and your colleagues, and drop a comment for me in the comment section. If this is the first time of visiting my YouTube channel, kindly subscribe and you would see a lot of amazing videos about Microsoft Excel and you can learn it to apply it to everyday life. As a first example, we will see how to calculate the payment on a three-year car loan that we want to collect. The annual interest rate for this three-year car loan is 7%. Remember, annual interest rate. And then the loan amount is $40,000. We can use the PMT function to calculate what the monthly repayments will be to the loan provider. Like we had mentioned, the annual interest rate for the car loan is 7%. The number of years, it's a three-year car loan, and the loan amount is $40,000. But for this example, we want to pay the back the car loan monthly. So we need to know how many payments we will make in three years. If we make monthly payments, how many times are we going to make payments within three years? How to make this calculation is basically to calculate the number of years multiplied by 12. This would tell us how many payments we will make. In this case, we will make 36 payments before the loan is elapsed. Now, we want to know how much we will pay to the loan provider monthly. This is a very important metric because sometimes you want to match this against your salary to see if you will be able to shoulder this burden monthly and to see if you should negotiate to pay the loan over a longer period of time or you can pay the loan within three years. You use the PMT function equal to sign PMT, you open the bracket. The rate here is the 7%, which is the annual rate. But in this example, we want to make the payments in monthly installments. 
So we need to make the annual rate to become a monthly rate. And we do this by dividing the annual rate by 12 because we want to pay monthly. You put the comma separator and pair, which is the next argument in the PMT function, is basically asking the number of payments you would need to make for this loan. And in our example, this is the number of payments, which is 36 months. You put the comma separator. The next argument is the present value of the loan. Of course, the present value of the loan is the value of the loan now, which is $40,000. The next two arguments, which is future value and type, are not super important because you may not know the future value. But the type argument is basically a zero or a one showing whether you need to pay your repayment to the loan provider at the beginning of the payment period or at the end. So for example, you want to make monthly payment to the loan provider. Are you going to make the payment at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month? For this example, it is not very necessary. So we close the bracket and you press the enter button on your keyboard. I will just quickly change the currency here for the purposes of consistency. So here we have this amount. It's showing a negative sign because the monthly payment is a deduction to you. Every month, if it is a bank, the bank would deduct this amount from your account. This is why it is showing you that it is negative. So now we know how, how much we will need to pay back to the loan provider every month for 36 times before we finish repaying back the loan. Another important question will be, at the end of 36 months, it will be interesting to find out how much we have paid in total. Because mind you, we collect $40,000 from the loan provider and we are paying $1,235.08 per month. At the end of 36 months, we would like to know how much we have paid in total to the loan provider. And to find this out, it is super easy. You do the equal to sign, you multiply the monthly payments by the total number of months or the total number of payments. And this is the value that we have. And I am going to also change the format. So here we have $44,463.08. At the end of three years, this is how much we would have paid back cumulatively to the loan provider. Now, this amount is the principal amount plus the interest rate because we took or we, we, we borrowed 40,000 and now cumulatively we are paying 44,000. So this is way bigger than the loan amount, than the principal amount. The question will be, how much is the interest rate? If we want to separate the interest rates from the principal amount, this is super easy to calculate as well. So you have here 44,000, which is in negative. So I am going to put minus in front of C8 to knock off the negative sign. And I will do minus 40,000. This shows the interest. So basically, this tells us that at the end of three years, we will have lost $4,463.02 for the loan that we have collected to buy a car. For this loan of $40,000, this is the monthly payment. And I'm going to highlight this also. This analysis will enable you to ask a very important question to yourself. What if I can save up this money in three years and I just go ahead to buy the car directly without taking a loan because taking a loan at this interest rate means I am going to lose this amount within three years. We will take another example, which is 
taking a mortgage, which is basically a loan for a house. And in this case, we would determine the parameters manually. So let's assume that we take this loan for this house at the rate of 5%, and we are going to pay back the loan in 25 years. Normally, a mortgage loan takes a longer time to repay, and then we will calculate the number of payments. In 25 years, how many times are we going to repay back the loan to the loan provider if we are requested to do a monthly payment of the loan. So basically we we'll just do 12 multiplied by 25 years and we are expected to make payments to the loan provider 300 times within the 25 year period. And because it's a mortgage, Let's say we are taking a loan of 550,000 US dollars and I'm going to change the currency right here and I will copy and paste the formatting here as well. Good. So this is the house loan example. How much are we expected to pay back to the loan providers monthly? You use, you do the equal to sign, use the PMT function. The rate is this rate divide by 12 because we are making a monthly payment the number of payments is the next argument n pair so we choose this value which is 300 times the present value of the loan is this amount we have here already and the other arguments can be ignored you press the enter button on your keyboard and this is what we have monthly you'll be expected to pay $3,215.25 to the bank after getting this amount to purchase a house, after getting a mortgage loan from the bank. Like I said before, this amount covers the principal and the interest. So we would like to know, after 25 years, how much have we paid in cumulatively to the loan provider? So this is basically the monthly payment multiplied by the number of times that we make the payment. By the end of 25 years, this is how much we would have paid. We collected a loan of $550,000. At the end of 25 years, we would have paid back $964,000. Let us see only the interest part of this payment, what it entails. So I am going to do the total cost. And because it's in negative, and it's in negative because it's a deduction from your bank account, and I'm going to put minus in front of the total cost and minus the loan amount. This is the interest that we are paying after 25 years. This is the interest. It depends on what your options are, but you might really want to look at it critically. There are two ways that you can reduce your interest that you pay for a loan, or there are two ways to reduce the total cost of the loan. One of the ways is to negotiate your annual rate. So in this example, let us say that you you have a very strong negotiating ability and you are able to negotiate the, in, the annual interest rate from 5% down to 2.5%. And let us put this and see what happens. You can see that the total costs that you will pay in 25 years has reduced from 900 and something thousand dollars to $740,000. And your total interest paid has also reduced from around $400,000 to $190,000, which is a significant savings if you ask me. So reducing or negotiating the interest rate is one of the ways that you can use to reduce the interest to pay. The second way you can re reduce the interest to pay is to reduce the number of years. Reducing the number of years that you have to make the, the repayment will also reduce the total cost of the loan. So let us reduce this from 25 to 20 and see what happens. We can see here 
that the total cost of the loan has reduced even further and the total interest paid has reduced even further as well. But another thing to note is that the monthly payment has increased. So when you reduce the number of years where you need to repay a loan, the monthly payment for that loan increases. So you can check or you can analyze this against your salary to see if you will be able to bear this burden of monthly payment very, very conveniently. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if this is the first time. There are amazing contents on my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up if you like this content. One important point to note is that the value that is provided by the PMT function which is the monthly payment here, this value is covering only the principal and the interest. This does not include any fees, taxes, or reserve payments that may also come with the loan. In some instances, there are other fees or taxes or reserve payments rather that may come with the loan. The PMT function does not take this into account because it is dependent on what the loan provider gives. And like I said earlier, the PMT function works with a constant interest rate, not an interest rate that fluctuates in between the, the loan period. It, it's, it concerns itself with a constant interest rate. You need to know the number of years that the loan repayment will be done. And then you need to have information about the loan amount and you can conveniently use the PMT function. Let me know if you have tried to use this function and how easy it was for you. See you in another video.